In order to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of a function on a particular interval, we're going to have to use what is known as the closed interval method. So let's take a look at that method. Probably a good idea to pause the video and read over this method before we proceed. What we need to do first is to find the values of the function at the critical numbers of the function. Now a critical number would be obtained by first calculating the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and then solving for x. So let's do that. In this case, the derivative is fairly easy to calculate. The derivative of x is just one, and then the derivative of the natural log of x is one divided by x. And as mentioned previously, we have to set this equal to zero and solve for x. So perhaps we can add one over x to both sides and then multiply both sides by x. And we can see that x equals 1. And this represents what we call the critical number. Referring back to step 1, it's not enough just to find the critical number, but we actually have to find the value of the function at that critical number. So in other words, we have to calculate f of 1. So we will do so now. And that's as easy as plugging 1 into the function. And so we have 1 minus the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. And so we obtain 1 as our result. We want to hang on to that, maybe put that off on the side. We'll write down that f of 1 is equal to 1. We'll next look at the second step of the closed interval method. Step 2 is pretty straightforward. We have to find the values of the function at the endpoints of the interval. Those endpoints were given to us as 1 half and 2. So basically we have to simply calculate f of 1 half and also f of 2. So let's go ahead and do so. f of 1 half is going to have 1 half minus the natural log of 1 half. If you were allowed the use of a calculator you would see that this is approximately equal to 1.19. And next we will calculate f of 2, which will equal 2 minus the natural log of 2, which a calculator shows as being roughly 1.31. So we'll summarize those results on the side. So here on the side are the results. Let's look at step 3 of the closed interval method. In step 3 we are told that the largest of the values from steps 1 and 2 is the absolute maximum value and then the smallest of the values is the absolute minimum. If we look at the summary of our results, we see that the largest value occurred when we plug 2 into the function. We obtained a result of 1.31. And so, therefore, the absolute maximum value of, of the function on this interval would be 1.31. The more precise value that we had written earlier was 2 minus the natural log of 2. If we were looking for an exact answer, that would be the final and correct answer. The absolute minimum would be the smallest of the values, and of course that smallest value was 1. So the absolute minimum value is 1. So just to summarize, we can label those as the absolute min and then the absolute max.